So you're getting, yeah, this fantastic, phenomenal, ah, yeah, I've actually hardly tasted anything like it before. It's like a raspberry coolie with a bit of mint, but and a bit of lemon juice as well, but extremely, extremely elegant with this beautiful balance, this dry acidity, the smooth velvety character, absolutely phenomenal. What is up guys, bonjour, this is Julian, the French wine making guy who makes wine videos here on YouTube, yes, wine videos. And today is actually quite an exciting prospect of a video and a wine tasting for me personally. This is the third of a video series where we explored and learned together the fascinating world of fine sparkling wines. Yes, we're going to be talking about fine bubbles today. So first we looked at the different grapes that are used to make sparkling wines, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir primarily of course. And we looked at how each of them impacts on the expression of different wines. Then we looked at how different vintages with their own climatic conditions, especially here in France where it can vary quite a bit. We looked at how the, these climatic conditions result in varied qualities and personalities in different wines. And today we're going to be looking at what's probably the most exciting part for me of this series, the terroir. Yes, we love our terroir here in France because that's the ultimate expression of a place. So we're going to be tasting four different fine bubblies from Burgundy. Yes, we're not in Champagne, we are in Burgundy. There are some fascinating wines made in Burgundy, but sparkling wines as well from a producer that I particularly love that is called Louis Bouillot. We're going to be tasting two wines that are made from 100% Chardonnay and two wines that are made from 100% Pinot Noir. And yes, beyond this, because this is already going to be really interesting how Pinot Noir and Chardonnay compare, but beyond this, those two Chardonnays are made on different terroirs. One of them is a bit, I'm said, on a Chablis-like kind of terroir. One of those Pinot Noirs is made on a Gevray Chambertin type of Pinot Noir. So the heart of the best terroirs of Burgundy, but in a sparkling version. So let's jump right into it and see how the different terroirs in Burgundy, in where some of the best wines in Burgundy are made, how they translate into those sparkling wines. Let's jump right into it. So here we have two different cuvées made from 100% Chardonnay grapes. So there is no blending of grapes here. No Pinot Noir with Chardonnay blended together. We have two 100% Chardonnays and we'll taste later on the 100% Pinot Noir. So two Blanc de Blancs, which is the term to designate sparkling wines that are made only with white grapes. What's also remarkable in this tasting is that all of these wines are extra brut. So pretty much no or very little added sugar at dosage. This is what those terms mean. We get here the pure expression of the wines with no artifact from the addition of sugar. The best possible way to truly taste the terroir in sparkling wines. Now these two have slightly different terroirs. One with a terroir more like a Chablis, the other with a limestone clay type of soil. So fantastic limestone based terroirs, which are the best for making sparkling wines, but with a slightly different expression. So let's start with Les Trois Saints or the Three Saints. This is a blend uh, of different terroirs, three villages that are saint villages. Uh, some are in the Côte de Bonne and others in the Maconnais. So those three villages are Saint-Aubin, Saint-Romain and Saint-Véran. We are on the limestone ridge with a bit of clay. So I suppose and I expect and I suspect this wine is going to be a little bit opulent on the Chardonnay side. The restraint, the precision of the Chardonnay with the opulence, maybe the fruitiness of the clay. Let's see what it tells us. So again, this is called the Three Saints, Blanc de Blanc, Chardonnay, Extra Brut, Vintage 2010 from wonderful producer that I love. I'm expecting a pop here. Let's see what this little baby has to say. Again, I'm not using a flute so I can really taste and smell this wine really well. 
wow, yes, I am straight away getting a lot of brioche from the Chardonnay that we love in sparkling wine and in Chardonnay. Pungent, exuberant, super vibrant peach, peach character. Extremely fresh peach character, a little bit like a fresh peach juice character. Yeah, a little bit of apricot, it's a little bit of elderflower, it's quite floral as well. So I'm definitely getting the zinginess, the precision of some lime and freshly squeezed lemon juice with some solid acidity. All of this drives the tasting and gives a lot of vibrancy together with lots of fresh apricot and fresh peach exploding on the palate. But on the, the background, the whole is surrounded by some vanilla, some toasted hazelnut, some richness. And there is a texture that is slightly clayey. You can almost feel the, you know, the small grains of clay on your palate, some delicate phenolics that sort of coat your palate, a bit of an oily texture. So this is definitely a two faceted wine. It's got two faces, but it's also balanced, also concentrated, also powerful. Wow, I'm actually stunned at the quality of this wine. I can't wait to dig into the Vallée du Serein. And this one, I'm said, is the pure expression of Chablis grapes, but into a sparkling wine. So I am expecting some more minerality, maybe a little bit more restraint. But let's see what this wine tastes like. Uh, 2008 vintage here, loads of vibrancy in the color. Oh, yeah. I have to dig deep, but I'm getting some fresh, really fresh, uh, delicate apricot character and the floral elements. Okay, wow. This is much deeper of a wine. I think the overall balance is just absolutely outstanding here. It's oily, it's vibrant, but it's all coming together. Flavors are really, really subtle. You're getting the little bit of freshly squeezed lemon. You are getting a little bit of the peach, a little bit of the apricot, a little bit of floral character, but the notes are extremely, extremely delicate. And the wine is just extremely harmonious on your palate. The bubbles are fantastically fine. This is a very, very complete, extremely elegant, extremely fine, a lot of finesse, a lot of elegance into this wine and an utter, 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 utter balance in here. So this is really typical of these two types of wines. The wines that are grown on really limestone rich, a bit austere terroirs that give wines that are quite restrained, that are all about the subtleties of the expression of the flavors. But if you can appreciate these little nuances, you are also able to appreciate the balance, the harmony that they come with. As a contrary, the ones that are grown on a bit more clay, a bit richer soils, tend to be a bit more opulent, a bit more open, to have a bit more obvious uh, flavors and aromas. Loving these two wines, you could also imagine how for making a non-vintage cuvee or a cuvee that is not just purely terroir driven like those two are, you could actually combine those two to make even a greater whole. But let's dig into the Pinot Noirs now. So here we have two Blancs de Noir. So sparkling wines made from 100% Pinot Noir. Blanc de Noir means sparkling wines that are made from red grapes. In Champagne, it could be some Pinot Meunier as well. In Burgundy, there could be a bit of Gamay. No, those are 100% Pinot Noir. What's extraordinary is that these wines are made from Pinot Noir grown from the very heart of the Côte d'Or, essentially the area that makes such prestigious Pinot Noirs in Burgundy. Often Cremants are made using grapes from around the best villages in Burgundy, but these two come from the real heart of where the best grapes are grown. They're really kind of the sparkling version of the great terroirs of Burgundy Pinot Noir. One is made from grapes that are grown in savigny les bains if I'm not mistaken, which is next to Bone, and very reputable area for making really pungent and characterful Pinot Noir, while the other is made from nothing less than Gevray Chambertin. Yes, a sparkling wine made from Gevray Chambertin grapes. Can't wait to dig into those two. So let's dig into Les Vermeaux. This is vintage 2012, so the savigny les bains Pinot Noir wine. Let's see what it's got to tell us. I'm expecting 
Yeah, well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> so, dessus les vermeaux, again, 100% Pinot Noir, Blanc de Noir by Louis Bouillot. I'm very excited. I absolutely love Blanc de Noir. Uh, in particular, I love the red grape expression in sparkling wines even more than the Chardonnay ones. I can already tell, just looking at the color, this wine is, has a little bit of a pinkish, delicate pinkish hues to it. Uh, yes, it is yellow, but it's got a bit of a gray, we say gris, pinkish expression to those wines in it. Uh, and if you see a sparkling wine that's got slightly pink expression in it, there's likely to be more red grapes that have gone into making it than whites in than Chardonnay. Let's see what it smells like. Wow. So yes, we are on the citrus again, but we are more on the grapefruit and orange side rather than the lime and lemon. So if you see what I mean here, a little bit more opulent, not as restrained as limey and, cit and lemony, but rather orange grapefruit. So it's a little bit more open and exuberant. I'm also getting the brioche, a bit of cinnamon as well, a delicate vanilla. It's very, very subtle to smell at. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is so delicious. Yes, it is dominated by the grapefruit character. It's really exuberant. But there's also a bit of a grassy character of tomato leaf that comes through, but a very delicate one, not an aggressive one, really delicate tomato leaf. It's a little bit minty, which sort of lifts up the sensations. And on the background come a bit of raspberry, but super, super delicate raspberry flavors as well. So you get this combination of crazy grapefruit, a bit of orange, a bit of mint here, a little bit of raspberry characters, all very elegant. You really have to dig, you know, be able to identify. It's not like a concentrated raspberry. Those are really, really fine raspberry. You get this little minty character of a raspberry. Do you see what I want to say here? When you bite in a raspberry or in a raspberry leaf, you're getting this minty character as well. So you're getting yeah, this fantastic, phenomenal, ah, yeah, I've actually hardly tasted anything like it before. It's like a raspberry coolie with a bit of mint, but in a bit of lemon juice as well, but extremely, extremely elegant with this beautiful balance, this dry acidity, the smooth velvety character, absolutely phenomenal. It's got this smoothness, this sort of extremely, extremely comforting wine. I'm a huge, huge fan of this wine. Can't wait into what the Gevray Chambertin Pinot Noir sparkling wine. I mean, obviously, this is not an appellation Gevray Chambertin. We are talking about Crémant de Bourgogne. Oh, nice pop. So this is a wine that is called Grand Ray Blanc. Blanc is a bit misleading. Yes, this is a white wine, but it's made from red grapes. This is also a Blanc de Noir, 100% Pinot Noir. Similar color. Wow, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm getting all the brioche, all the spices from the oak character. This is a wine from vintage 2008. And yes, this is a 12 year old wine already. And I am getting the, we say that a wine Pinot, we say that it's got this Pinot expression, definitely some forest floor character, a bit of earthy characters to it, a bit of a fern character to this expression here, but together with, wow, together, yeah, with some buttery notes. There's a bit of lychee, yeah, a bit of lychee, then a bit of mango, I am finding some Chardonnay like sort of, sort of tropical fruit expression in here, even though there's obviously no Chardonnay, but I'm getting this pineapple, a bit of mango, this rich tropical fruit expression together with the earthiness. Wow, it's absolutely fascinating to smell. Her. Mm. Wow, it actually feels like a, yeah, like a, an aged red Pinot Noir, but it's a little bit smoother. It's got a little bit more uh, grapefruit and orange and citrusy character than a Pinot Noir. So it's a little bit more vibrant, more opulent, a bit more peach, a little bit more stone fruit, a little bit of more 
lemon uh, to the expression of the Pinot Noir, but the whole backbone is all about forest flow. It's a little bit austere. It's got a lot of umami, this sort of uh, sweet, savory sensation, forest floor, Pinot Noir. Yeah, and it smells like a red wine, a, a bit oh, and a red wine that would be aged. It's a, wow, it's absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, wow, the vibrancy of the apricot expression, fresh apricot that just explodes on your palate. But then there's a whole forest floor coming through. Anyway, I think I'm taking a little bit too long to express what these wines are, but there's just so much going on here and so much that is really unusual, but really delicious and enjoyable as well. This is an absolutely fascinating wine together as this one, how would you compare those two? Well, the pure vibrancy of fruity expression here, as I described before, the citrus and the raspberry, extremely concentrated in a very well balanced and smooth and enjoyable wine. While here, this is more about the dry, bone dry acidity, a bit of the austerity, the forest floor, a fascinating wine. This is absolutely a wine that you would find I mean, they both are, they all are wines that you would find on the list of top restaurants, but I can see how a top chef, you know, Michelin star type of chef would absolutely love this type of wine on an entree, seafood dish, sort of delicate seafood dish entree, because this is so bone dry, but it's got all of these different earthy, oaky, citrusy facets that this is an absolutely outstanding outstanding wine they all are delicious delicious wines really if you have never tasted Cremant de Bourgogne like this well those are absolutely recommendable they're so fascinating to taste I mean for a fraction of the price that you would buy a champagne of this caliber for you can absolutely explore facets of different terroirs, different grape varieties. Those ones are just absolutely stunning. Mm, I'm going to have another sip at this. Oh, I'm enjoying those wines so much. As my final thoughts, I actually find really quite phenomenal that a sparkling wine producer such as Louis Bouillot in Burgundy goes through the lens of making so many different individual cuvées. I think they make different like 26 of them. By the way, if you're wondering what is a cuvée, there's a video explaining it right here. I find it really outstanding that a winery like Louis Bouillot actually makes so many different wines and allows you and me as a consumer to experience all the different types of wines and grapes that they have. Generally, they do just blend them together. They make fantastic blends, but you can't experience all the different facets of wines. With this three episode series exploring the wines by Louis Bouillot, we've explored the different grapes, the different vintages that they have. And today we went full circle exploring the wines that they provide from different terroirs and how that tastes like. It's a fascinating experience if you get a chance. I mean, go through that experience, buy some of those different wines from the different individual terroir cuvées collection from Louis Bouillot and experience this. It's absolutely fascinating. I have been amazed at the quality of the wines by Louis Bouillot in general. If you watched the last episode, linking to it here, you would remember how impressed I was with the wines. This time I was expecting it, but still I was so, you know, it went another another level up, another notch up with those terroir driven cuvées. And it's really been a revelation. Although when you think about it, well, it only makes sense. There's a very long and precise winemaking tradition in Burgundy as well, including for making sparkling wine, especially from a producer that is specialized, that has been specialized for decades and decades into making, crafting specifically sparkling wine. So there's not only fantastic, Still wines in Burgundy, but with a producer like this one, fantastic sparkling wines as well. 
So Louis Bouillot, I'm taking my hat off because you make the art of crafting great sparkling wines that we have in France very proud. You are a great ambassador to the quality of Crémence de Bourgogne. It's been a wonderful journey to be able to taste all of these different wines and take you with me through this journey of learning the intricacies of sparkling wine. I think that was it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you're enjoying the videos on the channel. Feel free to like and support and share as far as possible with as many as possible wine lovers that may enjoy this out there. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir. Ah, so delicious. Au revoir. Cheers. Bye.